This Focus on Health segment is brought to you by Aurora Healthcare. Hello and welcome to Focus on Health. I'm Ted Stefaniak. Today we're at the Aurora Health Center in Oshkosh and we're standing just outside the neurology department because May is Stroke Awareness Month and that's today's Focus on Health. Well, joining us now to discuss strokes and some of the warning signs is neurologist Dr. Victor Diaz. Thanks for joining us today. Let's start just by talking about what is a stroke and what, what's happening in the body when there's a stroke. Uh, well, um, the most common cause for a stroke is uh, having a small uh, piece of blood clot that obstructs the flow of blood into the brain, um, producing the death of that tissue, an infarct in the brain. That's by far the most common uh, cause for a stroke. But uh, the second type of a stroke is when you have rupture of the blood vessel, sort of, and you have a bleeding. So those are the two main categories of strokes. All right, so that's happening inside our bodies. But what are some of the outward signs that, that we should be looking for? What are so, some of the symptoms of a stroke? And that's a very good question. Um, there is a short mnemonic, uh, and probably a lot of people have heard about that, is the term FAST. And in FAST, what you are looking is uh, for in first place, face, uh, to look uh, in the, the mirror or ask a friend if there is some droopiness in the face, some asymmetry in the face. Um, the second, the A, comes for arms. So the, you should try to put both arms in this, uh, raise both arms, and if one of them drops down or drifts, uh, that's another uh, sign. Uh, S comes for speech, if you have problems with your speech, slur speech, your words don't come out the way that you are expected to. Uh, that also is another uh, critical sign. And finally, T comes for time, uh, which means that if you notice all these uh, signs that I mentioned, you should contact 911 because the brain, uh, the most time, the more time that you take for that, the more cells that die in the brain. So just get on, get on the phone, get 911 over to help you Absolutely. out right away. Absolutely. Who, who are some of the people that are at risk for a stroke? Um, well, uh, there are some risk factors, obviously, for a stroke that uh, some of them we cannot change. Uh, specifically, we cannot change age and sex. Uh, the older that you are, the more likely that you will have a stroke. And in terms of sex, a uh, male tend to have more strokes than females, uh, similar to with heart attacks at a younger e uh, uh, age. Uh, as the uh, population grows older, then you see a uh, kind of catch up with females. They start to have more strokes than males. Um, those are uh, factors that we cannot uh, change. Other factors uh, or the things that make you likely to, to develop a stroke are uh, also the same risk factors for cardiac disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol. One that is always overlooked and is extremely important because probably is the easiest and most preventable risk factor for a stroke is smoking and also excessive alcohol consumption, uh, which is always uh, important to, to bring to the attention of our patients. Are, are there some tests then? You talk about the cholesterol and some other things. Are, are there some tests that can show if we're at risk for a stroke? Absolutely. Uh, every time that you go for your general checkup, uh, your general well-being, uh, um, evaluation by your primary doctor. Uh, typically, you will get checked for your cholesterol levels if you have signs or if you are developing diabetes, uh, to check your blood pressure if you need uh, to control that, and uh, mostly uh, also lifestyle changes, uh, keeping yourself active, uh, having an adequate diet. So those are factors that uh, are also important, and your primary doctor typically checks in your general well-being checkup every year. Okay. And I would imagine there, there must be some tests then to, sh to show that you've actually had a stroke as well. Yes, that is correct. Um, when, once we have a patient that has presented with this uh, mnemonic presentation, the FAST, then clearly the patient comes to the emergency room uh, to a hospital that uh, typically has been certified as a primary stroke center. Uh, like ours. And in the emergency setting, uh, besides the initial evaluation, the physical exam, uh, the first test uh, to look for what type of stroke we are dealing with is a CT scan of the head. A plain CT scan of the head will show me if this is uh, a bleeding in the brain 
sometimes can be something entirely different or if there is no signs of any damage in the brain that tends to correlate with a very acute onset and then we can administer medication to uh, break down the, the clots that are producing the infarct. Some other cases, and it's not uncommon, patients sleep over, they, they say, doctor, I have some numbness, I have some slurred speech, I thought that it was gonna go away, and they fell to the four letter in the mnemonic, time is brain, so they do not come. By the time they present to the emergency room, the CT scan will also show me the stroke already, but it's past the time to any active intervention because that tissue is dead and there is no way to recover it. All right, so I, I want to avoid a stroke. I think we all want to avoid a stroke. Absolutely. What are some of the things we can do to help prevent a stroke? Um, in terms of prevention, uh, probably the number one and the easiest one that can be attempted is uh, cessation of smoking. It's not uncommon uh, as a neurologist and specifically treating several patients with a stroke. I've seen many, many times uh, a problem of uh, tobacco use or abuse. So smoking is the easiest, uh, the most uh, simple to do, and perhaps even cheaper because you will uh, spare some money. Uh, other uh, things that are important to watch is obviously, as I mentioned before, the risk factors, uh, controlling your blood pressure. If you require uh, medications for control of blood pressure, that's something that you always have to be compliant with it. The similar is for cholesterol. If you are diabetic, uh, it's very important that you keep your diabetes under good control. Sometimes it's quite challenging because uh, patients don't like to be deprived from um, whatever they like to eat, sometimes sweets. Uh, but obviously, uh, diabetes accelerates the normal aging of the blood vessels. Uh, the only thing that we can do about that is trying to have a very good control of your diabetes. Uh, lifestyle changes, uh, again, uh, smoking, doing uh, physical activity, uh, and in general, things that are also uh, conducive to have a good cardiac health also are important. I want to go back to something you mentioned a moment ago. Yeah, we know Aurora is a, is a certified uh, stroke center. What's involved with, with that certification? Well, that's a very good question. Um, Currently, the Jacob Commission, which is kind of the supervising entity for all the hospital, has created this denomination as a primary stroke centers. This uh, certification of status for certain hospitals, uh, if they meet the criteria and they have the expertise and the personnel uh, adequate to deal with an emergency such as a stroke, uh, they have to have the uh, adequate uh, technology, CT scan, MRIs, 24-7. Uh, they have to have uh, neurologists on call. Um, and in certain cases, if uh, there is a complicated case, we have the capabilities of transferring those patients. Typically, that will be more with the bleeding type of uh, strokes. In those cases, uh, for instance, a primary stroke center will stabilize the patient, will have enough capabilities to put the patient in uh, adequate uh, status to be transferred to a higher facility. If, uh, if a person is fortunate enough to survive a stroke, does that person then have a greater chance of having a stroke again? Yes and no. Uh, yes, in terms that a patient once uh, you present a stroke, you, it's uh, unlikely to present a second one after something recent. A, a stroke indeed is a marker of a more diffuse problem, which is what we call peripheral vascular disease, uh, typically related to buildup of plaque in the blood vessels, what we call atherosclerotic disease. So many of the patients that have a stroke, the biggest reason why they afterwards can suffer a, a lethal event or they die it's not precisely from the stroke, they die from a cardiac event like a heart attack. So every time that you have a patient that has had a stroke, besides uh, making sure that you address the risk factors for stroke, the second important thing to look after is how is the status of their heart because the heart is what uh, most of the time ends up killing the patient, not the prior stroke. All right. well, Dr. Diaz, we appreciate you taking some time today on Focus on Health. Thank you so much. If you'd like to know more about strokes or to schedule an appointment with Dr. Diaz, talk to your primary care doctor 
or you can call Dr. Diaz at his office at Aurora Health Center in Oshkosh at 920-303-8700. I'm Ted Stefaniak. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Focus on Health. This Focus on Health segment has been brought to you by Aurora Healthcare.